In this last uh, video of the series, I'm going to recap what we've learned about the make file and also show you how to use macros, which simplifies the process even more of compilation and linking in a large project. Recall that when we create our make file, we create these series of, of targets that we uh, want the compiler to make. So that first word on that first line is our target, and that comes before the colon, and anything after it are the dependencies, the files that we need in order to create that target. And this is an indication to the compiler to go and check these files and see if there have been any changes that have been made. And um, if so, then we need to, to remake that target if it's not already made. Of course, if, or if it has already been made. If it's not made, um, then it will go through the process of making it. And if it does need to get made, then this is essentially the command uh, that gets invoked. And that's essentially what we would do is if we were at the, the command prompt of our operating system. So here we can see that we want to, to create the executable make test. It has the dependencies of those object files. And um, when we go to compile then, we're using those object files, so essentially we're linking here instead of compiling, and um, generating that output file of make test. And we can create this both for executables and for our object files. And notice the dot C or dash C uh, option, meaning compile, in the generation of these object files. And when we go to uh, invoke our make file, so the file name can either be makefile with a capital M or makefile with a small c, no extension on that. Uh, and it will automatically go and look for those. And I should probably write these in reverse order because I believe it goes and looks for the, small, the lowercase m first and then the uppercase m. You can uh, specify the, the uh, file with a dash f and so if I had my make, it would go to, to that make file instead. And then if you have a specific target in mind, you can, you can say make with that specific target, and it goes to the find that target line within the script. Or if you simply just say make, it'll go to that first target and try to make that. So you can see some different options here. This is something you haven't, I haven't shown you before. Um, that means to display uh, commenting to the screen. There's a lot of options uh, that you're going to need both for compiling and linking, um, particularly when we get into, when we start incorporating the OpenGL and the GLUT into our, um, into our system. So we want that flexibility to be able to change uh, those options as we are doing different uh, um, in, at different stages of our of our development. So the use of macros is something that's really going to come in handy for us. So let's look at that. I'm going to go back to our code here. And I've already started a new uh, make file for us with these macros at the top. You can see that the, the convention is that you use all caps and then you say equal and then you put in some text. And this is really text uh, uh, matching and replacement. It's exactly like the pound defines that you would use in a C++ file. So our objects here, the target object files that we're going to be looking for are maketest.o, things.o, and apples.o. And we have these other things filled in. So CC, that's which compiler do you want to use? You don't necessarily have to use the G++. These are the compiler flags, which is, uh, you know, notification printout of, of comments is the W wall. And the W, the uh, dash C is compilation. And L flags are linking flags, which again, when we get into OpenGL, we'll be adding to those. And then we can replace what used to be lists of text with these with these uh, macros and the make will go in and, and do that replacement for us. Now the first thing you'll notice is that I've added in this all. So there are going to be some fake targets that we're going to um, add in. The reason why we really refer to them as, as 
as fake targets is because we're not generating a file called all. We're just using that as sort of a go-to within our script to tell make uh, which part we want to create. So in our all, it's uh, typical that that's the first target that you write at the top of your make file. And we need, it depends on all of the object files, so that list of, of objects that we just created. And then down here, uh, it's going to replace those macros with the text from above. Essentially, this all is replacing the make test right below it. Below it, So you can see the cc is equal to g++. That's what we have here first. You can also see that the syntax here is a dollar sign uh, with parentheses and then the text that you want to replace inside of the parentheses. So that's the G++. Then we have um, the linking flags, which we weren't using uh, previously, but we can add those in. And then the list of, of objects again. And so that matches this list of three objects, the dash O and then the, and then the make test. So this all, as I said, completely replaces that. So we're going to remove those from our make file. And then for the rest of these we can do the same and we can replace our compiler command and we can replace our linking and um, trying to multitask here, our linking and compiling flags. Oh, I'm messing it up. We don't want our linking flags here because we are just compiling, creating the object file, so we actually want C flags, not L flags. And then, oops, sorry, C flags, we'll get it here. Uh, using our make test.cpp. Okay. Again, replace that, replace that, and last for our things, And now we have successfully replaced um, the different commands and options and flags with our macros. The last uh, two uh, lines that I'll point out are the clean and the tar, which are also common things that we add in. Again, these are dummy targets. We are not trying to generate um, a clean file. What we're trying to do is clear out all of our object files and make a um, make a clean compilation. So once you remove all of those object files and, and remove the executable, the next time make runs and it tries to compile, it'll discover all those things are missing and it'll start from the very beginning and it will generate all new uh, object files. And that's a very good trick to learn if you feel like you're changing things in your code but when you go to compile they don't seem to be appearing um, or something just seems strange with the compilation. It's a good idea to just uh, generate a, a clean compilation every once in a while. And you can see what we're doing here is we're re removing all of the .o files and the executable. Um, the other thing that is might be convenient, um, it's less so now that we have, uh, now that source control is in common use, it's less common for us to have to zip things up and, and mail them around, but still a useful thing to have around uh, is this tar, so we're going to um, generate this command to package up all of our project files into um, a, a single archived file. And now, if I did everything right, we can go over here. Um, I can do make clean. Oops, not clear, clean. Make clean. Looks like it removed everything. And then we can make all. And I think we succeeded. No, I have to type it right. There we go. <laughs> make test. Do you eat apples? Yes, I do. And don't eat me. Perfect. Now that is a lot of information, um, but there's a lot more 
to learn about make files. Uh, this should get you through for most of this semester, uh, but if your make file starts to get really big and, and, and cumbersome, you might want to go back to that GNU make file tutorial or, or um, user's guide and find more shortcuts and, and different ways that you can really take advantage of that utility. Also, there are some references to resources on the Moodle page as well.